Good morning and welcome to today's reflection. I hope that you are finding the reflections helpful and encouraging in this unusual season. Our reading today is from Luke chapter 22 verses 31 to 38. Jesus said, Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to sift all of you as wheat. But I have prayed for you, Simon, that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. But Simon replied, Lord, I am ready to go with you to prison and to death. Jesus answered, I tell you, Peter, before the rooster crows today, you will deny me three times. Then Jesus asked them, When I sent you without purse, bag or sandals, did you lack anything? Nothing, they answered. He said to them, But now if you have a purse, take it, and also a bag. And if you don't have a sword, sell your cloak and buy one. It is written, And he was numbered with the transgressors, and I tell you that this must be fulfilled in me. Yes, what is written about me is reaching its fulfilment. The disciples said, See, Lord, here are two swords. That's enough, he replied. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Here we see Jesus' recognition that Satan is trying to tempt him and Simon Peter and the disciples. Satan hoped that the disciples would all blow away like the chaff. And how does Jesus respond to this attack? Well, Jesus responds by praying for Simon Peter. Even though he knew he was going to betray him three times before the cock crowed, he knew that Simon Peter would return and strengthen his disciples and lead the disciples in the early church. Jesus knew of his imminent death. He knew he was about to suffer on the cross. And he knew those challenges that lay ahead for the disciples. Whereas once they had been sent out with no purse or bag or sandals, and they had received hospitality as they moved with Jesus and ministered in many places. But that hospitality was to go. They would no longer face hospitality, but persecution. They would also need a sword but not a steel sword or weapon for fighting, as the disciples thought, but the sword of the Spirit, which is God's word, ready for this spiritual battle ahead that Simon, Peter and the disciples would face. Simon Peter's response is very confident and brave. I am ready to go with you to prison and to death. But we know that this bravery does falter, and he does deny. It's a really big question to ask, but how far would we be prepared to go in standing up for our faith? The Barnabas Fund, one of the charities which provides hope and aid for the persecuted church, has many real life stories of Christians stepping out in faith despite oppression and maltreatment. Here is an account from June this year. If anything happens to my pastor, I will not fear. I will take charge of pastor's work and serve the Lord. This brave declaration was made by Samaru Madkami, aged 14 from Odisha State, India. He had good reason to expect his pastor to die, as Christians in the area faced hostility and violence from Hindu extremists. Samaru's father, a church elder, had received death threats. But it was Samaru himself who was abducted and brutally killed, not long after he had made this courageous pledge. He went missing on the 4th of June and his body was found two days later. The gang who killed him also tried to abduct his cousin, but because his cousin was stronger and older, the cousin managed to get away. Samaru was a passionate Christian, said his pastor, 
recalling how the boy had energetically shared the gospel with other young people and children in the village. In the last year, the Barnabas Fund has helped 26,000 Christian victims of violence and injustice in 19 countries. Countries such as Ethiopia, Thailand, Cameroon, India and Kenya, for example. A 14-year-old boy, a courageous servant. This reminded me of the words in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12. Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith and in purity. This is a privilege to live in a country where our lives are not at risk for being a Christian, where we do have the freedom to worship in our homes, our churches and our communities. Jesus recognised that his friend and disciple, Simon Peter, needed prayer. Let's pray for those now who are persecuted. Let us pray. Sovereign God, we worship you and we acknowledge that you know all of those who suffer in your name. We remember those who are imprisoned for their faith and ask that they would join with the Apostle Paul to see that even though they remain captive, their chains have furthered the gospel, not frustrated it. May they inspire and embolden fellow believers to speak the word of God more courageously and fearlessly. God of all comfort, for those who are tortured both in body and mind, give them grace to endure. Merciful God, for those asked to pay the ultimate price, who are martyred because of their love for you, may they truly know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of sharing in his sufferings. Father God, for those who are widowed and orphaned, May they know the comfort that comes from your promised presence, even when they walk through the valley. May they be strengthened by your spirit, enabling them to rejoice with the psalmist as they proclaim that the Lord will not abandon them in death. Heavenly Father, we ask that you would make us ever mindful of our brothers and sisters around the world who need us to stand with them as they suffer in your name. Teach us what it means to overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. We pray that we would not love our lives so much as to shrink from death. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. Amen. Jesus replies to Simon Peter, And when you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. Let us strengthen each other continuously in prayer. Thank you.